Welcome to Derby for the 2023 British BMX Championships. Okay, we're here in the Scottish Pens with Ian Archibald. Now, Ian, after some attempts, you've got yourself a world plate and it was at your home world. How does that feel? I had my family there, friends from work, um, social friends, so I put a bit of pressure on myself, but I'd got uh, as much practice as I ever needed on a world's track, so I felt I could do it, and yeah, everything went perfect on the day, and top four, just to be in the mix with all these guys that you watch and see that have always had results at Worlds and to be in there in the mix and across the finish line was just like, yeah, you can't ask for any more than that. Just how BMX should be, just amazing feeling. Oh, awesome. I think everyone shares it as well. It was amazing, really good to watch. Uh, really, really good, really well done. So um, Ian's agreed to be one of our guest presenters today. So uh, we're going to talk to some people um, from Team Scotland. Right, we've got two riders here from Team Scotland uh, at the 40th Annual British Championships here in Derby. So this is Cooper and this is Murray. So Cooper, how many British Championships are you raced at? I've done about five or six. Five or six? Yeah. Any favourites? Derby. Derby. How many times are you in Derby? Uh, too many. Too many. All right. Okay. And Murray, how many Brits have you done now? Four. Four Brits. And your favourite one so far? Bournemouth. Bournemouth? Okay, right, and how did you get on there? Uh, I got 15. 15. Hoping for better this year? Yeah. Okay, well done. And Cooper, what are you hoping to get out of this one? I want to get tops, top 16. Top 16, so that's semi-finals? Yeah. Think you can do it? Yeah. Okay, how many is in your age group? Uh, on my 20-inch, I've got 67. Wow. And then on my cruiser, I've got 24. That's a lot, mate. Well done. Good luck. And Murray, how many is in your age? Uh, I've got 65. Wow! So, if you get with that, you're going to do well. So what are you hoping for? A final. Oh, good luck, eh? Yeah, good luck. So you're racing two days, so cruisers today and 20 tomorrow. So, yeah, uh, good luck for that and good luck for you. Here with Elsa Rendell Todd. So, uh, Elsa made all the finals this year, pretty much. So, really amazing ride, really good riding. Um, European number one on the cruiser. European finalist on the 20-inch, world one on the cruiser and world two on the 20-inch. Uh, tell me about how that feels. Uh, it feels good. Everything went well in the cruiser because I won both of them. Yeah, I wasn't expecting some of it, but um, after a few races, I realised I could have won and just went for it. And then on 20, I messed up the final for the at uh, the Euros. So in the Worlds, I wanted to uh, at least get second. Um, and I messed up my gate and I was in about fifth. But then um, I caught up and got second on the last street. It was really, really good to watch. It was so enthralling and, you know, the whole place was cheering for you. So, um, yeah. Well, what, what's next for you? Um, so, in a few weeks, there's the National in Manchester and it'll be my first proper race off the 8 metre because I raced Championship Women on 20. And I'm looking forward to that. And then I guess it'll just be into training for next season. Well, well done, Elsa. All right, we're all right behind you. Thank you. Here we are inside line with Rich Eames. Welcome back, Rich and Lewis. Look, day one at the British Championships. The racing's been off the scale, hasn't it? It's, look, we've just seen the semi-finals, uh, particularly the cruisers, the 15, 16, 17 plus. Yeah, there's no quarter asked or given. Do you know what I mean? They're in them turns. The three or four abreast. People are throwing elbows left, right, and centre. You know, with the turns being tight as well, and the fact that they all get so close together, chuck those elbows in, it's just carnage and it's great. And uh, the younger ones as well today, we've got the older ones tomorrow, Lewis. Uh, what's standing out for you? Some of, the, some of the girls actually 
really, really good racing. Yeah, I mean, over the last few years, the, the quality of the girls' racing has really stepped up. They've ramped it up another level, and especially in them sort of like 10-year-olds, 11-year-olds, and 12-year-olds, when they're all starting to grow a little bit, they're all starting to get that little bit faster, getting that little bit of edge on each other. Yeah, it's some brilliant racing. Throwing elbows in turns, it's, it's quality to see, yeah. And coming out of the World Champs, we've got a few plates in there, actually, and, uh, and the Europeans as well, and they're really showing their class. Yeah, definitely. It's just like when you've raced the Worlds, especially the home Worlds, I think it just lights a fire under your backside a little bit, and you can see that the riders are stepping it up. I mean, you've only got to look at the 12s class and how fast those kids are going. And there's like, you get to the semis, it's basically just two main events. It's brilliant to watch. And when riders like Kobe Rayford are not making it through, you know, it leaves the door open for somebody else as well to maybe just make a little breakthrough. But yeah, 12 year olds, class of the weekend for me. Fantastic. Well, there you have it. That's the inside line with Rich Eames and Lewis Locke. I'm here with Harry Tanner. He's our northern onboard uh, hot lap pilot, I suppose you'd call him anyway. Um, Harry, you're racing tomorrow. Uh, what are you looking forward to? Uh, the final, hopefully. Just getting in the final, really. Yeah, well, that's plan A, I suppose. And then plan the second part of plan A is uh, to really go for it. Yeah, top three I'm hoping for, but obviously the win as well. But yeah, well, you've been looking really good this year and obviously doing our hot laps, piloting our hot laps in the, in the north. We've got the Manchester Indoor to come, which is starring Harry as well, so looking forward to that. Anyway, Harry's going to find um, some of his fellow north region riders to speak to. I'm here with Gabe Simpson. Gabe, how did it go on today? Well, it, it went fairly well. Um, had a good, good few races and pulled out a bag in the final. How did it go a couple of weeks ago in Scotland? Um, yeah, it was a it was a good good venue. Um, was in uh, fifth in the semi final and then pulled the last corner move to qualify for the final to get world number four. Well done, Gabe. That seems good. Thank you. I'm here with two young ladies who both became British champion 
today. It might be in again in one case as well. Really amazing, really, really good racing today. So we've got uh, Betty and Ella, both from the same club as well, which is really good. Obviously my home club. Betty, how does it feel? Good. And why does it feel good? Because I've never really won a um, race like this. It's a big one, isn't it? Yeah, does it feel really good? Yeah. And what are you going to do to celebrate? Uh, probably stay up all night. <laughs> okay, sorry about that, Mum. And Ella, how does it feel? How does it feel for you? Good. You've had quite an interesting year, haven't you? So um, you got a W on your plate as well? Yeah. And um, tell, us about, tell us about the lap today. It, I just really enjoyed it, really. It's just really fun. Why was that? Because you get to meet different regions and meet new people. It's really cool, isn't it? What a big event as well. And a great stage. You guys were on that stage picking up your big trophies and the O1s and your O1 for the rest of the year as well into next year, which is really cool, isn't it? All right, well done, you two. Really well done. All right, I'm here with Oscar MC, one of our hot lap uh, pilots, uh, does the South, some of the South races, South Nationals. Um, you're racing tomorrow, Oscar. What are you hoping for? I'm hoping for a semi-final and hoping I can do something good and uh, hopefully make the final if I can. I'm just going to do my best, ride my best and see what happens. Bit of a breakthrough this year, making, uh, making, yeah. some, making some small numbers in those yeah, finals. Yeah, How did it go? Yeah, I've made a couple um, National A finals. So I've got seventh twice this year so far. Um, yeah, it's been good. It's been good. Consistent, consistency's been there this year. It's been good. Oh, for sure. It's a real breakthrough for you. Um, so you're going to find some people from South Region as our guest presenter yep. to talk to. Okay, so we have a few riders from the South here. We have... Lele. John Moore. Ella. And they've all been racing today on Saturday. And how do we get on today? Good. Good. She came seven, she meant. Seven. Cool. Went out in the semi. Semi. So, very good level of riding today. And how long has it been since you lost on a British champ, Sam? Well, I did Bournemouth last year, but before that, we had a little gap from 2018 and back in the game with these two. Yeah. Yeah. And I see you got a trophy there. How did today go? It went okay, a bit raggedy. Yep. Oscar, I hope you'll point out to me that I got third. Yeah. I'll take it. We secured the bag. All right. How did we do then? What place did you come? Seven. Seven. Well done, Millie. Well done. Ella, how did it go to the few? I came eight. It's harder category this year, but yeah, improvement, I guess. Cool. Well done. Well done. Nice riding. Wow. Well, today was more emotional than I was expecting. Uh, tomorrow's got even more in store. Um, really, really very, very good racing on track today. The track was in absolute mean condition. The weather was really kind. Bit of rain, lots of sunshine. The finals were, it was just mint for the finals. Really rare moves on track, amazing racing. I know I use that word a lot. I've said that before, but it was really, really, really good. Um, and we've got all of it to look forward to again tomorrow. So um, there you go. That's rounding out day one at Derby for the British BMX Championships 2023. Hi, welcome back. Day two of the British BMX Championships 2023 here in Derby. Weather's just turned a little bit grey, a little bit of rain this morning on and off. Um, tracks are running really fast still and the berms are, I'm told, very grippy because of the nature of the tarmac. So let's see how that goes. Um, yeah, close action. We've got the older age groups today, 13 plus, uh, and it's really getting going. So uh, yeah, looking forward to a great day's racing. Okay, I'm here with uh, another one of our um, regional guest uh, presenters today, Barry Rim, Rim, Rimmers. Barry Rimmers, well done. Uh, hello. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we're going to talk, well, let's talk about Braintree because, um, you know, real big growth in the club this year. And uh, how's it going? Yeah, it's been fantastic, actually. We've had a lot of new riders in doing regular introductions to BMX. So we've got a lot of kids coming through. New one came through this um, September, so we'll have another intake, probably around 20 maybe 25 riders. We pretty much convert most of them into regular club riders and 
we've got some of them here today. This is their first go at the Brits. Um, biggest club here, 78 riders. Can't ask for more than that. And we've got all levels. So lucky enough to get a champion yesterday. And I think we've got five or six riders crossing the line second. So right in the mix for the... The, the battle for the win, so it's good. Um, really good, East Region developing nicely, uh, good development centre obviously run by my mate Jules, so that's really cool. Um, yeah, so you're going to talk to some of these riders now um, from the region, is that right? Yep, handpick a couple of riders, let you know how your day's been and uh, what they got yesterday, and some that are battling here today on the second day two in the older categories. Okay, here we are with uh, one of our stars from East Anglia from day one, it's Phoebe Miller, representing obviously for us at Braintree. Um, Phoebe had a cracking day yesterday. How did we get on, Phoebe? Good, and I'm now British champion. Amazing result. And uh, Phoebe, so what's the best bit of the track for you? Finish line. I guess that's because you can celebrate that win. Yeah. So yesterday in the male 12s, one of the toughest categories here at the British Championships. Big numbers, lots of hard racing and super skills from the kids. On my left, I've got Leo. So Leo, first time at the Brits. How did your day go? Pretty good, yeah. But, um, we, well, it was pretty hard racing, but um, yeah, I managed to get decent pacing, but yeah. Clearly not as happy with the result as he'd like to be, but I can tell you, Leo did actually make quarterfinals at the Brits, so he did fantastically well representing the region and the club, which is an amazing story. And on my right-hand side, I've got Freddie, whose first time at the Brits was last year at Bournemouth, where he made the quarterfinals, and this year, Fred, how was it? Um, uh, I did, raced all right, I did clean races, and made it to final, I came fifth. So fifth in the final, quality semi as well? Yeah, I came fourth in the semi. So good battling all day long, so two lads showing the progression that the kids can have if they get involved at club level and work their way through regionals and then end up here, national level competition. Okay, another region rider here, this time it's uh, Mickey Porter. Uh, Mickey's from Norwich, uh, rocking the Norwich uh, club. How's Norwich yeah. getting on? Yeah, we're doing good. We had uh, Alan Hill won the cruise for us yesterday. We've got them. We've got Jared looking for a win as well. Carl, Marcel's over there, someone's over there. We've got, we've got good prospects, I reckon. Excellent stuff. Uh, yesterday's result was really good. Uh, the cruiser, do you prefer the cruiser or the 20 inch today? Uh, I like racing more on the 20 inch. It's, it's, it's more aggressive, sort of. Harder racing, but it's fun on the cruiser. Good to get a podium. Enjoy. Uh, and what's the first moto result so far? Uh, third place, quite a stacked one. Um, good fun though, corners are getting slippery. Um, but yeah, enjoyable. I don't think Mickey's out of breath enough, he weren't trying hard enough that first moto. Okay, here with Lewis Locker, who is one of the commentary team uh, for the National Series, and has also uh, got the honour of being our guest presenter from the Midlands region today. So Lewis, you're going to talk to a few riders in a minute, uh, maybe a couple of first timers and uh, people who've been here a few, a few times before. But um, yeah, tell us about the Midlands region, how it's going this year. Yeah, they've, uh, they've been fantastic this year. Some of the riders have really stepped it up. They've been obviously training through winter. They've been putting in the work and you can definitely see that it's starting to pay off. Yeah, they've been fantastic this year, 100%. All right, well, let's go and find some to talk to. Definitely. Uh, so we've got uh, Kelvin Betty here, one of the uh, top coaches in the country, of course. Uh, do you want to talk to us about how the coaching's going recently? Obviously, coach at Nottingham, coach at uh, Derby as well. So how's that going? It's been amazing. I mean, since the success at the Olympics with Beth and Kai, we've seen a lot more riders coming in, as you've seen yourself. And the progress they've all been making is unreal. I think the, the way that the Midlands are kind of producing these riders at the club and that the, the clubs are really working hard and bringing the new riders in and then taking the level up all the time of the riders that are already racing, it's been amazing. So obviously the Midlands have had some cracking results this weekend. How does it make you feel as a coach when you see your riders getting these sort of results? I feel so proud. I mean, I know that, I mean, we both know how, how they go through a race day and the feelings that you go through and kind of steering them through that race day and then seeing them get the success at the end of it, yeah. it makes me, I don't know, I'm not going to say emotional, but in a way it is, yeah, it's emotional. Because yeah. you're so attached to these riders, because you see them week in, week out. And it just, I'm living the BMX through these riders now, and I'm not ashamed to say that. So uh, we've got a couple of riders here from the Midlands. Uh, we've had a few British titles between them already this weekend. We've got uh, two-time world finalists from a few weeks ago in Glasgow, uh, Lily Chiswell. We're just going to get a few questions from Lily. So how was the world champs for you, Lily? It was amazing. I didn't think I'd make the final on both bikes, but I managed to get through on 20 and I'm happy of getting through on the cruiser after a few near misses on the years before. 
Lily rode fantastic at the Worlds. It was so great to see. Uh, we've got a tie here who uh, has been British champion before, haven't you, Ty? He's also had a European number five. And then he won yesterday as well, which was ace, wasn't it? How did that make you feel? Uh, made me feel really happy, good. I'm happy to have it again. Um, and it made me feel amazing. Good lad, good lad. Right, and we've also got Logan here. This is uh, Logan's been racing uh, BMX for years, but yesterday made his first British final on the cruiser, didn't you? And you took fourth. How was that? It was all right. It was good. Like it was good on the stage and stuff. Yeah. Felt good, yeah. And then you race it today. How do you feel ahead of the race today? Uh, all right. I've done good so well so far. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we just took it through the quarters. Got your semi-final next. Feeling good? Yeah. Good lad. Thank you very much. We're here with the with the world couple. I guess you might call them. Four years was it, did I see? Four five, years? Five. five years? Oh my five goodness, years. time flies when you're having fun, I doesn't it? So, um, uh, Beth, well done at the Worlds. Thank you. Uh, was that the, that's the second senior world title now, I think. And um, obviously next year's a big one for you. Yeah, definitely. It's obviously the perfect lead in to Paris at the moment. Um, yeah, I feel like I'm more happy with just how I dealt with the day in Glasgow. Like the pressure was so high, family there, home crowd. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to enjoy the whole experience and I managed to do that and yeah, obviously come away with, with first is just extra special, so yeah, over the moon. It's pretty intense, wasn't it? The crowd yeah. was massive there and obviously when in Tokyo there wasn't really a crowd at all, I guess. No, no, so we kind of wanted to come into this to use it as experience for Paris because obviously my family are going to be there watching, hopefully Bryn will be there watching. So yeah, got to get used to that pressure and yeah, be able to perform and hopefully get another gold medal. <laughs> yeah, well done, well done. And, um, and Brynne, so that's two, two W3s now. And uh, I guess we might just sort of shorthand it to, it's quite a long track, isn't it? Yeah, very long track. Uh, yeah, I didn't have the legs, but sure, for next year, it's on the list to do and tick it off. And you need a passport for Paris by the sounds of it. Yeah, definitely. And probably a hefty loan to be watching <laughs> Beth. So yeah, it'll, it'll work out. Right. Well, well done you two. It's fantastic to watch your progress and I know everyone is always cheering you guys on. So it's really cool. All right. Well done. Thank you. So um, we were just talking to Beth and Bryn and really looking at the next generation here. Uh, two absolute superstars on the track. W1 and different number today, but W2 on the 20 inch bike. Uh, Freya, that's three in a row now. Is that right? Yeah. How does it feel? Oh, it's amazing. Just seeing all the hard work and bad days of training, good days of training all going in and seeing the results come out is just a massive like weight off my shoulder and showing that the future could be bright and that if I keep going at all I'm doing that could go well but just got to keep head down, keep training and see where things go so yeah. Oh, well done and obviously there's a lot going on you know you guys have got uh, exams next year I guess as well you know uh, that's, a, that's obviously a big one as well so how does, that, how does that factor in, you know, into all the training I know you guys do? And you're doing the freestyle as well, so you're pretty busy. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be tough, but um, I'm hoping just to keep everything up. And then I'll, I'm going to see if I can still go to the Worlds, because they're in May. I'll see, talk to my school, see if I can do some exams later so I can carry on. But, yeah. All right, well, uh, two uh, young women, 15-year-olds, absolutely top of the world. And as I said to Bryn and, uh, and to Beth, you know, everyone is behind you guys and it's fantastic, all right? So good luck. Thank you. Okay, I'm here with uh, James Clitheroe, uh, the other W1 from Glasgow. We've spoken to the others uh, who were top of the tree in Glasgow this year. And James, wow, you found a grippy front tyre and you made it round the lap at last. It was really, really good race, really good uh, demonstration of your skill and speed. So tell us about, well, tell us about that lap, first of all. Wow. Um, I was more concerned about the gate because in the past few finals, like Euros, Worlds, I've messed up the gate, I've either hit it or not gone to plan. So I just had, I was just happy to get the gate, do you know what I mean? Focused on just getting that time in and just getting down the start hill. And then the first corner after Vessas on the Euro sliding out and <laughs> missing out on possibly a podium at the Euros, um, determined just to get around it and rode the corner out well and, you know, the rest was, lap was just smooth and the rest was history. So if, I, if I remember rightly, you had an issue in one of the motos, didn't you? And you had to go from about, I think you were 10th or 9th or something yeah. <laughs> out of 8 and, um, and had to get right back to the start, right back to the front. And you did, I think. Yeah, I unclipped out the gate and then I just couldn't get around until the second corner. 
bided my time, went round and passed, I think it was five people on the third straight in about three jumps and then went round the last corner, thought I'm having this and got the last guy on the last straight just at the line. That was, really, that was really cool. It was sort of, um, it was, if you don't mind me saying it, was Kai White-esque. <laughs> Although we might in the future, I think, probably be saying it's James Clitheroe-esque. So um, I was really impressed with that, I must say, because it was that resilience, he came back. So you've been working really, I know you work really hard. Uh, you're only 13, you do a lot of training, put a lot into the sport. Um, what are you, what, what's your plans for the future? What are you hoping for in the future? I think just representing GB at a few more worlds and then getting on the... Um, BC programme with Dylan and Kyle and everyone like that and then hopefully one day making the Olympics or just getting anywhere near it that'd be a dream do you know what I mean? Massive dream and you know massive opportunity and you're looking really good out there so um, everyone's behind you all right well done. Cheers. Thank you. Okay day two inside line Rich Eames on your own today Rich. Yeah on my own sadly you know all my mates have cleared off so yeah it's just me and you John. Well, that's how I like it, to be fair. Voice of BBC and the voice of a small YouTube channel. But anyway, <laughs> um, it's good fun. So uh, yesterday was younger riders and some of the older guys on Cruiser, all the cruisers. Um, today is really about, you know, 13 plus. It's the, it's the real sort of talent of tomorrow, I suppose. The next generation of medal winners, hopefully, and some crossover as well with other disciplines. So the racing's been really hot today, even though it's been cooler with a, with a damn track. Yeah, I mean, you've been watching the guys and the girls are absolutely flying. I mean, the action when they go into the turns, and they're going into that second turn like three or four abreast, and you can almost feel yourself go, ooh, and just cringe a little bit as they go in, because you're wondering who's going to hit the floor. But this is the British Championships, you know, there's no quarter ass or given, it's some of the best racing of the year. And it's a one shot, of course, no B finals today, straight away. The semi finals, you're in or out? Yeah, you're in or out. No B finals, that'll be keeping you in very, very happy. But yeah, the British Championships, it's like the FA Cup, do you know what I mean? There's only one winner. It's all about knockout racing. And uh, yeah, it's the best of the best on the day, take the 0 1. And it does throw up some curveballs as well, you know, um, like, you know, it's one shot, like you say. There's been a few in the past where it's like, wow, they won, that's amazing. And it. I find it's something you dine out on forever. Yeah, definitely. Once you've got a zero one plate in your bank account, your kind of BMX bank account, you know you've pretty much got it made as, a, as you know, a part of British BMX history. Because you've got Sarah Jane Nichols here this weekend. She rode the first British BMX champs 40 years ago. She's raced here again. And, you know, it's like she never left. So, yeah, once you're a part of the British BMX scene, you're good, for, good to go forever. And there's real talent here. Obviously, we were just chatting to uh, Elsa and Freya, who are the next kind of generation in the girls. 15-year-olds, a lot on their plate with exams next year, but top of their game, training every day. I know they train really hard. And, of course, Elsa doing uh, freestyle as well. Yeah, W1 and W2 at 15 years old. You just can't argue with that at all, can you? It's just a superb thing. And I like the fact that athletes have got the opportunity to cross over to dis different disciplines with... You know, Elsa doing the freestyle and I know some, some of the RAR riders are doing a little bit of velodrome stuff as well. It's all good, but I think the hearts will always be in BMX. Of course, absolutely right. Well, there you go, inside line with Rich Eames.
Right, um, here with one of our regional uh, guest presenters today. Hasn't done a hot lap for us yet, but I think we nearly got there earlier in the year with you and Taylor and a couple of others but with Harry Collis. Um, and uh, super far, one of the super far southwest, like, I don't know, I don't know what it is. It's like a squad, There's a whole squad of you down there. It's amazing. Um, how's the year gone for you so far, Harry? Uh, yeah, it's been good with, like, getting on the Junior Academy, like, all the new training, the coaches, everything like that. But uh, I had quite a few crashes in like all the races and everything. But yeah, it's good like all the new training, like new atmosphere and everything like that. So yeah, as a whole, it's been good. Just, yeah. I think most of you have been on the floor a few times this year. You know, like thinking about Ben and Taylor and Ned and others and Casey as well. So it's just really raw out there. But the Brits is really special, isn't it? It's really different. Uh, and we had the uh, we had the parade as well. Obviously, we have it every year. And uh, I think the theme this year was uh, was tractors and farmers. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Done where we are, everyone. Everyone thinks everyone lives on a farm, but there's a lot of farms to be fair. Yeah. But yeah. And you've just confirmed that with the parade uh, thing. And we're not going to talk about exams, of course. But well done, anyway. Uh, so, uh, so Harry's going to do some uh, talk to some Southwest riders for us now. All right, I know it's not your first Brits experience, but how did you find it like this year in like having a derby and like that? Anything else other than just good and fun? Amazing. What about you, Elsie? Um, it was really good, and I think it was the best Brits I've been to because it was like all planned out, and there was the camping was good, and the racing was brilliant, um, and it was really fun. Yeah. Well done. And what about the parade? What how what did you think of it? How what did you dress up as? Uh, I dressed up as a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Um, I was a pig, and I'm just happy that um, no one got hurt, and that it was really fun, and it was, yeah, good. Yeah. So it was a good experience overall, yeah? Yeah. Really Here with my mate, the Rhino, a.k.a. Charlie Wilcox. Uh, Charlie, we've been meaning to talk all year, haven't we? Yes. And the one time we've organised to talk, we've ended up on the, with the same outfit on. Yeah. Which is a bit annoying, but anyway, I'm sorry about that. Um, but tell me, uh, what are you dressed as today? Um, unicorns. The theme, yeah. For miles. For miles, yeah. So you got unicorns on the forehead and the cheeks and a bit of pink hair. That was for the parade, obviously. And how did the racing go from your perspective yesterday, mate? Really good. Seventh in the end. And you happy with that? Yeah. And what are you thinking about uh, for next season? What are you hoping to do? And how are you going to get there? Um, more training, doing more sprints, just and working on my gait. Okay, working on your gait. Well, we'll do that. And a few more tricks, skids and wheelies, yeah. Yeah. Of course. All right, well, enjoy, mate. Thank you. Right, well, I'm with Arn here, one of our other guest presenters from the South region. Uh, Arn's been doing uh, hot laps of some of our, for some of our track guides. So, um, Arn, didn't quite go to plan this weekend. Yesterday, yesterday, didn't quite go to plan, and then today was, uh, was a compromise. Tell us about it. So, yesterday, I won every moto, won my quarter, won my semi, had the fastest lap, and then got out in the final, but then went too wide. So I, someone came under me and I hit the fence. So yeah, and the, the fence won, didn't it? Yeah, yeah so done my knuckles in a bit, but it's all right. So today you went for fastest lap, went quite well, but pulled out after the motos because yeah. of the hands, yeah? Yeah, so I done three motos and I was like, don't want to make it any worse, so pulled out. Fair enough. We won't talk about the long jump. So, um, so Arn is uh, Arn's going to guest present to, uh, for us again today. So, uh, going to find some South Region riders to talk to. So, Charlie, how's your year been this year? Um, to be honest, it's probably not the year that I'd hoped for all round in junior men. Uh, I haven't had the best results. I've had a podium, and then I podiumed here today, which was really good. That was what I was aiming for. Just loads of podiums. Uh, at the minute, I'm sat in like fourth, I'm pretty sure. So, if at Manchester I can, yeah, if at Manchester I can get some better results, hopefully I can bump myself up in the national series. That's what I'm hoping for at the minute. Yeah. So then, Jack, how's your how's your Brits been this year? Um, it's been good. I like them wings. What were they for? Um, the parade. What What is your favourite bit about the day? Um, I like the parade, but I like watching racing as well. So the parade was one of your best bits, yeah? Wow, what about that? 2023 British BMX Championships at Derby. Brilliant event, really, really good event. 
the racing was just another level. Again, we said that a lot this year, but super tight corners really make for great racing. A really flowy track, really fast track. Um, a lot of winners that we probably were, we could probably uh, predict, um, but some un unpredictables as well. Uh, great to see those who've had success at the European and World Championships this year in the last few weeks at Bessensaw in Glasgow. Uh, here as well, racing on their new number plates. Uh, there's not a lot more to say really. I think it was a great event and uh, we look forward to seeing you uh, again soon trackside.